Hi there, I'm Stephanie Meyer with Project Vibrancy. I'm in the middle of taking a group of people through what I call a spring appetite reset, where I teach people how to build meals, whether they're at home cooking in their own kitchens or out in restaurants out and about in such a way based primarily on getting enough protein and eating enough vegetables and fiber that meals are very filling and last you until the next meal or set up your day to not be starving all the time. And it's been amazing. Every time I do it, I learn a ton too, but I really love teaching people how to make these changes that aren't super dramatic. First of all, to see what they're already eating and then to make these changes that aren't uh, difficult to implement, but get you so much more satiety, so much more energy out of meals in such a way that you naturally eat the right amount of calories. And if you are trying to lose some weight, it happens spontaneously. And I've got several people in the program that are actually trying to gain weight. And that can happen too, if you're getting into the right calorie balance by choosing the right macronutrients, primarily the right amount of protein. Just as a little bit of background, because I never used to do this either. I feel like a lot of women's health magazines and a lot of diet information that's geared toward women doesn't really talk about the fact that appetite is a lot of things. I mean, we are hungry because we need calories, but we also have an appetite for protein. And if we're not eating enough of it, we could be way past our calorie allowance for the day, but only have eaten a small amount of protein and continue to be hungry. And in fact, that, is really the story of the standard American diet uh, and what's happening in terms of our current food system, which is full of food that doesn't have very many nutrients or very much protein in it and has a lot of calories and is designed to be so delicious that it's very easy to overeat it. So learning about where to get the right amount of food and nutrients and where to look for enough protein and enough fiber and enough nutrients is a total game changer. And it means that you can kind of be anywhere and have ease around food and around designing meals uh, and know that you're going to stick with your goals and meet your goals instead of, you know, gearing up to start some big new program, some crazy new diet, go all in, last for about one to two weeks and be so frustrated because it's too restrictive. It's not delicious. It's too much work. Uh, and you don't know what to do with it when you go out to restaurants. And so you can't have a life and a social life. So this, I want to sort of set the stage here for changing all of that. And that's what this reset does. Uh, and these are the top five questions that have come up. So I'm going to, I don't have a watch on. I'm going to answer them really quickly. It's, let's see, I'm going to try to give myself 10 minutes. Okay, here we go. So First question, I kind of got out a little bit. I'm starving all day. I eat really healthy food. What is going on? So when this happens and I sit down with a coaching client, then I ask them to tell me about what they're eating. And of course it is really healthy food. They're eating, uh, you know, berries and greens and chia pudding and smoothies and salads and, uh, you know, kind of following the standard advice that a lot of, uh, health Instagram accounts recommend and a lot of uh, health magazines recommend to, you know, get protein by having an egg for breakfast and tossing some garbanzo beans on your lunch, on your salad for lunch, and then having, you know, like a small piece of salmon and some veggies for dinner. And when I have them track for a couple of days and really understand how much protein that adds up to, because of course the visual is really important for all of us. It turns out that they're eating 50 grams of protein uh, a day, maybe sometimes less, um, and not eating enough uh, vegetables and not eating enough uh, starch and healthy carbs to support workouts. So of course your body's gonna be hungry because your body is missing those nutrients. And none of the things that uh, I listed off are unhealthy foods. It's just that 
they need to be accompanied by more high protein foods. And those are uh, lean meats like chicken, steak, um, you know, lamb, fish. And I only say lean because per serving, they have more protein if they have a little bit less fat. And if you're trying to get protein, then looking to those lean sources is great. I'm not saying that, you know, that's the only, the only type of meat that you can eat. Um, looking at uh, plant-based sources like tofu, uh, tempeh, and legumes, of course, eggs, of course, low-fat dairy, again, just because it's higher protein per serving than higher fat dairy, but whatever, whichever you like is fine. Um, and then, you know, using some protein powders uh, occasionally, like pea protein, whey protein, egg white protein, whatever your favorite is, uh, you know, so that if you do make a smoothie that you're at least, you know, getting some protein in the smoothie. Um, and, and really figuring out how to get those protein foods at every time that you eat. So three meals a day and a snack is what I recommend for my clients. Uh, but of course it's very personal and you know, we fall into uh, creating something very personal for people um, so that you are getting, you know, instead of 50 grams of protein a day, closer to hundred grams of protein a day. And for people that are working out and lifting weights, you know, more than that so that you can see progress and build muscle and uh, recover from your workouts. So that's the answer to question number one. How am I doing? Ah, uh, two, I intermittent fast, but I'm not losing weight. This is so common for women. And there's a ton of information about intermittent fasting in the media right now. Uh, when this is happening, I have women usually add breakfast back in for a little while, even if it's a couple of hours after you wake up. But it's hard to understand how eating more protein and eating more nutrients earlier in the day can absolutely change your entire day unless you experiment with having a really nutrient dense breakfast for a while. And it, intermittent fasting can include a 12 hour fast. It doesn't have to be like a 14 or 16 hour fast, which I will say for a lot of women ends up uh, wrecking sleep <laughs> because it's too much of a stressor. And then it raises cortisol levels. And then you're drinking coffee during the intermittent fast and that raises cortisol levels. And when you try to get in bed and go to sleep at night, um, you might have a hard time falling asleep or you might be waking up at two or three in the morning um, because you're just piling on too many stressors. And if you're trying to do intermittent fasting and low carb, then I, uh, and you're having sleep issues, then uh, we should talk <laughs> because that's what's happening. Um, number three, I go to the grocery store and I buy healthy food and I don't eat it or I eat it for a couple of days and then I don't finish it. And my solution to that is, is meal planning and doing some batch cooking ahead of time. I have batch cooking meal plans that, uh, you know, can be very involved and provide up to six days of, of food, uh, or you can just make part of the batch and, and just make sure that you always have protein, some chopped veggies, and some cooked healthy starches like potatoes, sweet potatoes, quinoa, rice, brown rice, something like that already in your fridge. And a batch cooking session can last, I mean, I did a 30 minute batch cooking session myself last night. It doesn't have to be a long time, but because I created, I literally made a, a little zucchini kind of casserole with some tomato sauce and garlic and a little bit of Parmesan cheese uh, with some spinach in it. I made a big pot of rice that I stirred asparagus into and I batch uh, basically sauteed a couple of ground, a couple of pounds of ground beef and seasoned it. Put all that in my fridge and I will create salads, soups, quick meals, uh, you know, whether warm or cold for days and kind of mix it all up and season it differently with condiments. That's the system that I teach. And going to the grocery store with a meal plan means that you have a grocery list that isn't too big. You're just buying the food you're gonna use that week. So you save a ton of money and then, uh, and then you actually use what you buy. So that's my solution for that. Number four, I don't know how to order in restaurants. Uh, so many diets. Uh, make it impossible to eat in restaurants. And that's just not real life. And it is possible to eat in restaurants. 
caveat, yes. The tagline for my company is creating vibrant health in your kitchen. Absolutely the cornerstone to uh, having nutrient nutrient dense food on hand to not eating too many calories to uh, sticking within a food budget. All of these things are based on learning how to create simple meals at home that you really enjoy and that meet these goals and have enough protein and have enough fiber and are really filling meals. Uh, but once you learn that basic framework of how to get enough protein each in each meal and what that looks like and what that looks like with veggies and what, what that looks like with some starch, um, you, you can just take that formula uh, into restaurants and it's actually quite easy. And, um, and, and we talk a lot about that in uh, my program. And number five, my sleep sucks. I touched on that a little bit with intermittent fasting. I'm just gonna say two brief things about caffeine and alcohol, not to bum anybody out because caffeine and alcohol can fit into uh, a healthy lifestyle, but it's definitely worth taking a look at both of those things if you're having issues with sleeping and if you're skipping a lot of meals and you're under a ton of stress. You know, sleep, uh, sleep is highly affected by layers of stressors. And so work stress is a stress, family stress is a stress. Um, not getting enough sleep, unfortunately, is also. But too much caffeine, drinking too much alcohol, particularly close to bedtime, eating dinner too late at night, um, being too low carb for your ideal circumstance, uh, working out too hard without eating enough calories and without eating enough nutrients. These are all individually stressors and they can be good stress that, you know, uh, encourages mus muscle growth the way that weight training does. It's a stressor that breaks down muscle and then your body responds by building it back. But if you're stacking too many of them on top of each other, then, uh, then sleep is going to fall apart and that's when the wheels can really come off. So, uh, we talk a lot about that in my program and about how to get to a place where you're having good sleep. But the tip I would leave you with is to take a look at uh, how much caffeine that you, you're uh, consuming and certainly in the afternoons, um, whether alcohol is having an impact on sleep because it, it's actually really disrupts sleep, makes you feel like you're falling asleep faster, but then ruins the quality of your sleep and can cause you to wake up. If you're too low carb all day and in the evening, then uh, it's very common to be waking up at three in the morning when your liver release, releases a bunch, uh, a bunch of uh, glucose and boop, pops you awake and then it can be hard to fall back asleep, especially if you have a lot of stress otherwise. Um, and if you're intermittent, intermittent fasting and under eating um, and creating a stress around your body. So those are just some quick things to look at. All right, those are the top five questions. I just wanted to answer those for you to give you a sense of what we talk about in uh, Project Vibrancy Framework, which is my membership program where I send you grocery lists, I send you meal plans. We do once a week uh, Q&A like this, and I have a little lesson, very easy every week, but just a little experiment for you to try each week to deepen your learning as you go. Um, there's lots of repetition because that's how we change habits uh, by doing things over and over again and rewiring our brains basically toward these healthy outcomes. And, uh, and then we really work on, on just that, you know, the basics of solid nutrition, uh, getting enough protein, getting enough fiber, uh, working on gut health and making sure that you're getting good sleep because magical things happen when you get those things dialed in. So, oh, there's my alarm. I have to stop now. I could go on forever. <laughs> but I hope this is helpful. Uh, I'm going to put a link below and uh, and give you a chance to read more about everything that I'm talking about. But I'd love to see you in Project Vibrancy Framework. Thanks a lot, you guys. Bye.